Often, the fame and popularity of an athlete do not agree with the assessment of his achievements by experts who base their conclusions only on statistics. But just as it will hardly ever be possible to teach a computer to write real music or poetry, no statistics will be able to take into account the personal charm or the special charisma of an outstanding athlete. Many athletes quickly become extremely popular due to their achievements, but once they finish their performances, they are soon forgotten except by a few loyal fans who remember their names and their victories. But the athletes whose names remain forever in the memory of the fans are the salt of the earth, expressing the very essence of any sport. To be stronger, to be better, to become the idol of millions and an example of what a person can achieve by training not only the body, but also the spirit, developing the talent and abilities given to him by God. One such athlete is heavyweight boxer Jack Dempsey. Dempsey, it has the ring of history, of Americana, of a gaudy era that will probably never come this way again. William Harrison Dempsey was born on June 24, 1895, in the small town of Manassas, Colorado. His father, Hiram Dempsey, was a farmer and a laborer, and his mother, Mary Celia, was a housekeeper. The family lived in poverty. Hiram instilled in his sons the love of boxing. He told them about the great John Lawrence Sullivan. The two eldest sons, Bernie and Johnny, began to earn money by performing in the ring. The boys trained in their father's garage, and both took on the pseudonym Jack Dempsey. The fact is that Hiram loved to watch the fights of his namesake, an early Irish-American middleweight boxer, likewise named Jack Dempsey. The early Jack, though, never achieved great heights in the professional ring, but was popular amongst the poor for his flamboyant style. He won and lost, but he never let the audience get bored. Hiram's youngest son, William Harrison, looked at his older brothers, listened to his father's stories, and decided to become a boxer himself. He likewise took a pseudonym, which became a family heirloom and under which William Harrison Dempsey was known to the whole world as Jack Dempsey. There were no conditions for training. Jack dropped out of school at the age of 16 and worked part-time at train stations in Colorado and in the evenings, he would attend a private fight club, fighting for money. In the early 20th century, professional boxing was a semi-legal sport. Fighters were often arrested for illegal fighting, and Dempsey frequently found himself in jail. Gradually, Jack became famous amongst his peers. He only weighed 70 kilograms. He successfully defeated fighters larger than himself. By his 20th birthday, Dempsey had amassed an impressive record of 100 illegal fights, most of which he emerged victorious. If practice is the measure of truth, then Jack, lacking formal training, learned along the way. He made a wall cushion out of a large piece of felt and spent hours practicing his crown strikes, right crosses, and left hooks, perfecting them. In 1917, America entered World War I, However, Jack evaded military conscription in every way possible. Jack provided a certificate that he was the sole breadwinner for his family and therefore could not be enlisted. It is believed that Jack Dempsey made his professional debut on August 18, 1914. In those times, boxers' records were often fictitious and they contained numbers that were designed to make the fighter look better. At the early stage of his career, there were losses, but later Jack defeated most of those fighters in rematches. Boxing did not bring about guaranteed earnings. Dempsey was popular, but he was poor. He moved in the criminal circles of Colorado and worked as a pimp. In 1916, Jack married a prostitute named Maxine Gates. However, the marriage did not last long and brought a lot of troubles for Dempsey. The newlyweds divorced in 1919. Maxine sued Jack several times for domestic violence and to obtain money. Jack's career was at a standstill. In 1917, the young puncher was noticed by Jack Kearns, an enterprising manager who quickly realized that such a talent should not be missed. Dempsey worked as a sparring partner for the famous heavyweight Carl Morris. 
The sparring partners clashed in an official fight at the end of 1918, where Carl was knocked out by a blow to the solar plexus. Kearns took up Jack's promotion. He provided his ward with adequate nutrition and training conditions. Dempsey gained weight, up to 86 kilograms. With a height of 185 centimeters, he began to play in the heavyweight division. Being powerful, strong, and a punching heavyweight, he won the hearts of the American public. Cus D'Amato once said in an interview, I was 12 or 13 years old. I had a hard time getting into Jack's fights. It seemed to me that he shone like a god in the ring. He was the king of boxing. My friend witnessed how Jack did a hundred push-ups after the championship fight with Tommy Gibbons. Jack made his way up to the ranks and tirelessly approached the title fight. In 1918, he won six victories in a row. Jack Kearns organized a fight for the title against the reigning champion, Jess Willard. In 1915, Willard had defeated the great Jack Johnson and taken his title. However, Jess did not take boxing very seriously. In the four years since winning the title, he fought only one defense, gained excess weight, and was not ready for the fight with Jack. Four dynamite punches and Willard is down for the first time in his eight-year career. The crowd surges to its feet. When the champion rises, Dempsey leaps after him, drives Jess toward the ropes. Willard goes down for the second of what will prove to be seven knockdowns. Dempsey pounces to the attack again. Reigns punches on the floundering champion. There was no neutral corner rule in 1919, and Dempsey is allowed to stand over the fallen fighter, ready to swing as soon as both knees leave the canvas. A crashing blow to the wrist sends Jess down again. desperately tries to fend off the raging challenger. Dempsey lands more brutal punches. The champion staggers across the ring. Down again. The referee pushes Dempsey away. Willard pulls his battered body erect, only to be floored for the seventh time. Referee Ollie Picard is counting over the incredibly game champion. The bell rings, saving Willard from a first round knockout, but no one hears it because of the fantastic uproar. Dempsey leaves the ring, thinking he has won the championship at his 10 to 1 side bet. A $100,000 payoff. On July 4th, 1919, Dempsey became the new world champion. However, a curious accident almost cost him the title. Willard was knocked down six times by Jack's punches in the first round. Referee Michael Oliver declared Dempsey the winner. Jack and his team went to the dressing room to celebrate the victory. At this time, the timekeeper said that Jess could continue the fight according to the old rules the gong saved the boxer from being knocked out. Dempsey barely had time to return to the ring by the start of the second round. Willard escaped in a clinch, but was forced to surrender after the third round. The story had its continuation. After the fight, Jess had a broken jaw, cheekbone, and several teeth knocked out. The former champion publicly accused Jack of using plaster when taping his hands. However, an examination of Dempsey's gloves and bandages revealed no violations. Willard did not let up. After some time, he accused Dempsey of having a piece of iron clamped in his fist. The recording of the fight also refuted this accusation. The new champion's reputation had been restored. It was revealed, however, that Dempsey was boxing for free, and Jack Kearns had bet his entire fee on a first-round win. However, this didn't bother the champion as fame, wealth, and universal recognition awaited him. Dempsey defended his title twice, against average heavyweights, and hosted many exhibition performances as well. 
promoter Tex Rickard was preparing a mega fight. The heavyweight champion against the light heavyweight champion, Frenchman Georges Carpentier. Bad Guy Jack versus a good and well-mannered gentleman, Georges. The confrontation was dubbed the fight of the century. The Dempsey Carpentier fight was the social event of 1921. The list of people who attended reads like a society and entertainment world who's who. Rockefeller, Ford, Vanderbilt, Whitney, Gould, Harriman, Baruch, Astor. Flo Ziegfeld of Follies fame was there. So was John Ringling of the circus. Colonel Jacob Rupert of the Yankees. George M. Cohan, Al Jolson. It was the in place to be on July 2nd, 1921. Dempsey, as usual, is pressing the fight, using his greater weight and power. Round two, Carpentier gets home with his best weapon, his potent right hand. The fight was a success. After a cautious first round, Carpentier almost made a sensation by shaking Dempsey, but failed to finish off the champion. During the blow, Georges broke his right arm, and Jack came to his senses and knocked out the Frenchman in the fourth round. This was the first ever boxing fight to result in more than $1 million in revenue. Dempsey became America's most recognizable person, second only to the president. He married a beautiful actress, Estelle Taylor, bought a huge mansion in Hollywood, acted in films, underwent plastic surgery to correct a broken nose, and spent a lot of time talking to the media. Jack became a public personality. Wherever he appeared, he was surrounded by photographers. Women envied his young wife, and men admired the strongest man in the world of boxing. Dempsey continued to defend his belt from numerous challengers. After a sixth defense against the Argentinian Luis Firpo, Jack took time off from boxing. For three long years, he traveled around the country, conducting master classes and demonstration fights. Dempsey broke up with his manager due to a quarrel between Kearns and Dempsey's wife, Estelle Taylor. On September 23, 1926, Jack unexpectedly lost his belt to the little-known and unpopular Gene Tunney. The defeat motivated Jack to make a comeback. He did come back, and he knocked out the future world champion, Jack Sharkey, and went on to a rematch with Tunney. The second Dempsey-Tunney fight was a spectacular event for the American public. The new champion shocked Dempsey in the fourth round, but he was forced to the floor in the seventh. Dempsey's left sent Tunney into the first and only knockdown of his career. Tunney won the fight again by decision. A year later, on March 4, 1928, Dempsey announced his retirement from boxing. Jack Dempsey's life story epitomizes the highs and lows of a meteoric rise to fame. He knew poverty and hunger, which were replaced by fame and success. Sadly, after retirement, the former champion lost all of his savings due to the collapse of the U.S. stock market. And again, he knew bankruptcy and poverty. To all of his problems, a divorce from his second wife and new debts were added. Jack decided to return to boxing. However, this time, it was not in the ring. Over the years of his career, Dempsey had acquired significant experience in management. He helped young boxers to take their first steps in professional boxing. He spent time as a referee and worked as a trainer for such famous boxers as Max and Buddy Bear. With the proceeds, he opened a restaurant directly opposite the famous Madison Square Garden, which was a huge success. Rising from his knees, Jack was even richer than he was before the financial crisis. During World War II, he served in the United States Coast Guard, visited Okinawa, and was a physical training instructor in the U.S. Army. Journalists wrote that I was a traitor during the First World War and a hero in the Second World War. They were wrong both times. They don't know who I really am at all, Jack Dempsey said. Jack was married twice more, and he passed away on May 31, 1983, at 87 years old. Until the end of his days, he was an enterprising, strong, wealthy, 
and successful man. People live one life. Jack has lived several lives. I am proud to have known this great man, said Castiamato. Please do not forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any new episodes about the boxing legends of the past. See you next time.